I'm not sure they're going to get to anything that's worth calling an agreement right now. And deadlines have to mean something. When you're negotiating and you have deadlines, you have to show that you're serious and you're willing to walk away from the table and then come back in a position of strength, not a position of weakness. Tom Carton of Arkansas there discussing the U.S.'s lack of strength during these nuclear talks with Iran. Welcome back to America's Forum. I'm John Bachman filling in for J.D. Hayworth alongside me, Vera Gibbons and Pete Hoekstra, the former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. Uh, these talks overnight, the deadline extended again. Again and again. I don't again know what deadline again. means anymore. Seems like we've been through this drill, guys, time and time again. As you were saying in the commercial break, it's a dead-end topic. It is. It is. Uh, we have to talk about it because there's a lot on the line here. Uh, the potential of a nuclear arms race in the Middle East. Um, Pete, your take on this. John Kerry, uh, by extending these talks, has he surrendered his, any, any mm -hmm. leverage he had? I don't think we had much leverage to begin with. And clearly, Iran, uh, Iran doesn't see us as having much leverage. They're continuing to be very active you know, in, this, in this crescent now. Mm -hmm. From Yemen, they're controlling much of Iraq through Syria, and into Lebanon. I mean, they've achieved many of their objectives while these talks have been going on, uh, and we're losing, we've lost all leverage we've had. We're going to get a deal. The president wants a deal. Mm -hmm. At all costs, it's going to be a bad deal. Well, Vera, when you look at pub public opinion polling, something like 60% of Americans want a deal. That prevents Iran from getting a, a nuclear weapon. Well, they want a deal, but they want a good deal, don't they? That's exactly not, right. Not just a willy-nilly. Yeah. Nobody wants Iran to have a nuclear weapon, right. but I think they're conflating a deal with something that's going to prevent right. Iran from getting a nuclear right. weapon. What's, what, is, what is there to make us think that they're going to hold to? Anything? Well, I think the, the best example is the experience we've had with North Korea, where you know, we've had negotiations, negotiations, and you know, they haven't gotten a nuclear weapon. They haven't gotten long-range ballistic missiles. Oh, wait a minute. They have gotten all of those things. Uh, we're following the same track here that we did with North Korea. North, Iran is negotiating, negotiating, uh, and all the while they're gaining leverage and they're moving their nuke program forward. They will end up with a nuke weapon. All right, guys. Well, let's bring in a couple other guests we want to have join us now to talk to us, former CIA analyst and senior fellow at the Center for Security Policy, Fred Flights, also Ali Safazi, uh, Safavi, who was a spokesman for the U.S. Uh, for the U.S. for the National Council of Resistance for Iran. Gentlemen, thank you guys both for having us here. Ali, we'll start with you. Um, what is your take? We, we asked Pete if there's any leverage left at all for the United States. What do you think? Well, uh, good morning. First of all, I completely agree with you, Congressman Hoekstra, that the United States has lost all leverage. I think the main reason is that, uh, as you may imagine, uh, uh, the congressionally uh, mandated sanctions brought this regime to the negotiating table uh, in the first place. And, of course, the president's the vehement opposition to any new sanctions, I think, has uh, denied the, the United States of any leverage in dealing with Iran. Remember that this is the 19th round of high-level talks since uh, uh, the United States and the Iranian regime uh, began negotiating 18 months ago. Yeah, you mentioned and 19 I, there, Ali. Fred, I want to ask you, we've been through this drill before. Um, is there anything different this time? And let's say if, if things do totally break apart here today and no deal is reached, is there anything to build on moving forward? Well, John, bear in mind that two deadlines were set, one for March and one for the end of June. And there's some parties who didn't treat this deadline very seriously. It seems that John Kerry treated it very seriously. I don't think the Iranians ever did. I don't think any of our European partners did. And I think there's a, a very high chance that Something will be produced, some vague agreement. John Kerry will declare victory, and the talks will continue for a couple more months. So, in, any, in, in, in other words, just uh, rinse, rinse, wash, and repeat, uh, in <laughs> effect, from what we've seen before. I mean, that, that's exactly right. But at the, at the end of the day, John, the United States has surrendered to Iran. 20, two years ago, when we decided to let Iran enrich uranium, we surrendered. We're now simply... So, so, so Fred, was it over at that, that point? I mean, was that really the, the nail in the coffin that, that led to Iran eventually getting a nuclear weapon, as many folks feel is inevitable at this point? I, I mean, this administration has conceded the bomb to Iran. I think they decided Iran's going to get the bomb anyway. Let's have an agreement that'll try to rein them in with tough IEA inspections. The problem is Iran's not cooperating with the IEA. It never has. And the IEA recently said that there was an agreement in 2013 that was key to this deal that Iran has completely defied. Well, real quick, Ali, I want to ask you, and we'll get to you in a second, Pete, I want to ask about these sanctions here. If the deal falls apart here and the sanctions stay in place or more sanctions are, are put into place, Ali, what is the impact then on the uh, average Joe walking the streets of Iran? 
Well, the sanctions, to be honest, have really never affected uh, the Iranian people. After all, even with, with the sanctions right now and the plummeting oil prices, the only thing that increased in the Iranian regime's new budget for this year was the defense budget and the budget for the Revolutionary Guards, which was raised by 50%. And clearly, I think the Iranian regime is getting the economic windfall, even now as they negotiate to the tune of $12 billion so far, uh, basically to expand their uh, aggression across the region, as, as you mentioned yourself, in Yemen, in, in Lebanon, in Iraq, in, in Syria. So clearly, I think the right way is to uh, uh, use the path of sanctions. I think this is what brought them to the table in the first place, and I think that's how the United States can demonstrate that it has some leverage over the, the Iranian regime. Remember, there's no light at the end of the tunnel of negotiations. I think a bomb is waiting at the end of these talks, and clearly with the Iranian regime not willing to given into intrusive inspections by the IAEA, insisting on extensive uh, research and development in secret sites like the ones that the NCR revealed back in February in Ladizan 3. I do not believe how we can be convinced that even if an agreement is reached, that this would prevent the Iranians from getting the, the nuclear bomb. So well, Pete, that, let me ask uh, you this. I, should, should Congress come back when they come back after Easter and, and pass a, a bill? Because they know they have probably support in both houses now. Just new sanctions on Iran and... <clears throat> and then leave it up to the White House to take it from there. They maybe should, but at that point in time, the president will veto it, and the end result will be that Congress will have tried, but nothing will change. And I think the, the real question then goes to Fred. Fred, at this point, what are the options on the table, either from a congressional uh, standpoint, or let's say the president actually changed his mind. Is there any way to recover uh, from where we are today and s stop Iran from getting a nuke? Well, I think there's a there's a growing possibility of a bipartisan veto-proof coalition in Congress to pass sanctions. But I think we have to deal with the reality that the status quo, no agreement, is better than this agreement. This agreement will legitimize Iran's nuclear program and destabilize the Middle East. The alternative isn't war. The alternative right. is no deal and do everything we can to stop Iran from getting nuclear technology until we have a president with the resolve to push a real policy to stop Iran from doing so. All right, I want to ask everybody about one uh, tweet that Michelle Bachman sent out or put on Facebook yesterday, basically comparing Barack Obama to the German wings pilot who crashed oh, the plane. I just think that that's crazy, crazy nuts. I mean, this guy was a complete whack job. Yeah, Pete, go ahead. That's a little too far. A little that's too far. I, I agree. Yeah. I think that's that's out of control. Certainly, when we get in there, we got we got to run, guys. We got to go. Uh, Fred Flights, Ali Safarzi, thanks for being with us. Pete Hoekstra, Vera Gibbons, back with more here on America's Forum right after this Newsmax now.